So we are in Romans chapter 14 this morning, Romans chapter 14. And today we're going to be talking about using or abusing our Christian liberty. Now, if you recall uh, what we're talking about last week, what we were talking about last week was what to do about these uh, disputable matters. And if you remember, these disputable matters weren't really things about doctrine. They weren't really things about uh, what's, what's clearly spelled out as far as what the truth is in the, in the Word of God or what uh, we should be doing about the Word of God. It's not like somebody could come up and say, okay, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, um, not love because uh, that, that's just simply the way that I see things. No, that, that's not what it is whatsoever. Um, but what it was talking about is certain, I guess you could say, kind of gray areas. Uh, there was a certain truth and something that was known about it, but not everybody had the, the maturity and the faith to accept what that was. And just simply by not accepting what these things were, it's not like they were out you know, doing something wrong or doing something bad. It's just simply that they, they weren't quite there yet. And the example that Paul was referring to was me eating uh, clean meat or eating unclean meat, whether we could do it, whether we could not. Uh, but it wasn't just simply li uh, limited to that. And so with these disputable matters, you remember what Paul just simply said, and that is, if you know the truth about the situation, then don't look down on somebody who isn't quite there yet. And at the same time, if, if you notice that somebody is doing it uh, and, and you know it's right, but you just don't feel it in your heart, then don't judge that other person. And so those were kind of some of the things that we looked at last week. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because today, as we continue into this chapter, chapter, we're really talking about uh, very much the same thing. We're talking about very much the same situation about this controversy of whether or not to eat these meats that are clean or unclean, whether that meat is something that is clean or unclean as dictated by in the Old Testament, or something that is clean or unclean that is dictated by uh, something that may or may not have been sacrificed to an idol. It doesn't really matter. It's just simply there are some people that says, yes, you can do this and no, you can't. So today what we're going to do is we dive more into this chapter is we're going to be looking at this idea about uh, the abuse or the use of Christian liberty. Because sometimes when we look at situations like this, we kind of come to the point in our life of just simply saying very callously, well, I really don't care about what somebody else thinks about this or what somebody else views about this is. I'm just going to simply do what I'm going to do because God gives given me the liberty to do it. Now, when we start to have that kind of approach and we start to have that kind of opinion about things, we uh, need to understand that that is something that isn't really using our Christian liberty rightly. Instead, it is simply abusing our Christian liberty in selfish regards. And so what we're going to see today is that, yeah, God does give us liberty to make certain judgments and to do certain things or, or not do certain things. Um, but at the same time, the reason why he gave this liberty to begin with is for the advancement of his kingdom, not for the consumption of ourselves, not to simply be used for ourselves. And when we realize that, we realize what the kingdom's work is all about then we can start to focus in upon that and we can allow these other things to just simply take care of themselves, okay? So, taking a look, starting in Romans chapter 14, beginning in verse number 13, it says this, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. 
Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better to not eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother to fall. So, whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not, uh, who does, uh, not condemn himself by what he approves, but the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats, because he is eating, uh, his eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Now, one thing that we need to understand is that we really do have liberty in Jesus Christ. And you think about what, what is liberty in Jesus Christ, it, it pretty much boils down to this. And that is that Jesus Christ has died for us on the cross. And in dying for us on the cross, He has taken care of all of our sins. He has taken care of the sins of our past. He's taken care of the sins of our present. And He has taken care of the sins of our future. And so if we, because we have believed in Jesus Christ, if we have found forgiveness for all of our sins, past, present, and future, then is there going to be anything that is going to keep us from heaven? Is there going to be anything that's going to keep us from, from the kingdom of God in, in eternity? No, it's not. And so if you think about it, we do have a certain liberty. And that liberty is that we can go and we can live our lives and we don't have to worry about the things that we do condemning us because we have that forgiveness of Jesus Christ through faith. Now, some people will say, okay, well, you know, if, if Jesus has, has forgiven us of all of our sins and therefore, you know, there's nothing that's going to condemn us, then what's going to keep us from, you know, doing things that's, that's, that's contrary, doing things that, that are against Him? Well, that's a subject of a whole different s sermon, you know, because there, that, that doesn't mean that, you know, just because God allows it in terms of not uh, kicking us out of heaven, it doesn't mean that He likes it. And there's the discipline of the Lord. You know, there's everything that's, that's involved with that. But in for our sake, what we're talking about here is just simply these matters of, the, of dispute. Here are these things that, yes, it was very good and very appropriate for someone to go and eat meat that was sacrificed to an idol as long as they weren't participating in the sacrifice itself. And it was okay for them to go and eat meat that the Old Testament was said was unclean because Christ has declared it clean. And so it was all okay and fine to do anything with that. I mean, you know, God gave us the liberty to do that. But at the same time, we need to understand is we need to take our liberty and be sure that we use these things for the kingdom of God, not just simply in these matters, but all the matters of our Christian liberty. You know, since Jesus has saved us, since Jesus has forgiven us, we need to be on a different mindset and a different footing of saying, okay, well, what can I do then to serve God instead of what can I get away with things? Okay. And so this is kind of taking us back to this passage. Now, I want you to take a look at verse number 14, and I want you to see a certain principle that Paul gives in verse number 14 that kind of carries through this whole passage passage of Scripture. In verse number 14, he says this, <clears throat> he says, as one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. And so here's part of it. And he is saying, you know, that in, 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 there is no food that's going to be unclean about this. There, there, there's nothing that, that God is going to look at you and say, you are sinning if you eat this. Okay. And it, you notice that Paul says that um, he's fully convinced about this. And he also says that he is one who is in the Lord Jesus. And so he, he's not approaching this as far as something that he just kind of has figured out. Or he's not approaching it in terms of, you know, some kind of, of view of his own opinion. But instead, this is something that the, the Lord Jesus has revealed to him. This is something that has been given to him. As somebody who is in the Lord Jesus, meaning that the Lord is, is revealing this to him. He is fully convinced on it. I mean, there, this is the truth about the situation, right? And so here's a certain principle that he's stating, and that is that there, there is an absolute truth here. And the absolute truth is that there's nothing unclean in and of itself as far as food is concerned. 
And so, you know, when we stop to think about it and we start to, to think about our lives and what we're doing, we need to understand is that, you know, some of the things that we eat, we don't have to worry about if God likes it or if God doesn't like it. You know, there are certain things that, uh, you know, we go to eat and uh, it may not be the most healthy thing for us in the world. You know, those uh, brownies that were there, man, those are pretty good, uh, you know, and it's sometimes, okay, well, I'm going to eat one and it was so good, I'm going to eat another and everything like then. And so, you, you know, some people say, well, you shouldn't do that because that's that, that sin. Well, Maybe you're overindulging. Maybe you are not doing something that is going to be for the best thing for your health and your life and everything like that. But you need to understand is that there is nothing that is unclean in and of itself as far as what we eat, right? Okay, but understand that is something that is in and of itself. Now, continuing into the last part of that verse, here's something else. And that is, it says, but... If anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. And so here you got a situation in the Roman church where somebody is saying, you know what? I, I, I can eat that ham sandwich. I can eat that catfish filet. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I'm going to do it. And then you've got another person who's looking at that one person and saying, well, you know what? He says it's okay. He's been saved a lot longer than I have. He's been a church member a lot longer than I have. He knows things that I don't know. So you, you know what? If he says it's okay, then even though I've got some reservations about this, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to eat it. Okay? And as he's taking each bite, what's going through his mind is this is defiled. This is making me defiled. This is something that God doesn't like. In his mind, he knows one thing, but in his heart, it's telling him something different. Okay? So here's the situation. Even though Paul is saying, fully, firmly convinced there is nothing at all wrong with what he's doing, if the man does not see it in that regard, if he is thinking that there is something wrong with it, then guess what? There's something wrong with it. Now, there's nothing wrong with it in terms of the action itself, but there is something in term wrong with it as far as what his thoughts and what his feelings are. And we need to understand that as we go through life, there's times that we just really need to good, keep a good conscience about things. You know, if you are just simply gone through life and, and some of the things that you've done, you know, you, 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 you know, maybe some of the TV shows that are on, some, maybe some of the conversations that you have, maybe some of the, you know, the things that you go and do and everything like that. You know, there's some things that you go, you know, I, I just I really don't know if God likes this or not. I really don't know if this is something that is appropriate for me as a Christian. Well, in that kind of situation, isn't it better to err on the side of con uh, uh, on the side of, uh, of caution? I was going to say, but I could say it's better to err on the side of conscience as well, because if our conscience is there, and if our conscience is violated, and where we're saying, I just feel like this is not a good thing. I feel like this is something that God disapproves of. This is something that God dislikes. Then. Even though he may approve of, even though he may say, that's fine, you go right ahead, you do it. There's not a thing in the world wrong with it. It's our conscience that's there bothering us. And here's the problem. If we continue to do something that our conscience is saying, don't do, don't do, don't do, then guess what's going to happen? Over time, our conscience is going to start to get hardened. And if our conscience starts to get hardened, then all of a sudden when we start to do something that the Lord really doesn't want us to do, we're going to say, well, okay, the Lord really doesn't want us to do it, but so what, right? I, I, I don't really see a problem with that. I, there, there, there's nothing there that really bothers me about this. There's nothing holding me back. I'm just going to simply go ahead and I'm going to do it anyway. So you see the problem here and you see the, the principle that Paul's laid out. He, he says, here is something that is in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. But if somebody in their heart of heart thinks that there is a problem with it, you don't do it. As a matter of fact, you can go on down to verse number 22 and 23, and you can see what he says. In verse 22, he says, well, whatever you believe about these things, keep between you, yourself, and God. 
Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. And so if somebody is saying, you know what, I, Paul says this, this is okay. I, or we may be thinking, you know, in this kind of situation, I don't, I don't see a problem with this. I don't see where it violates anything in Scripture. I, I, I feel pretty good about this. Then, you know, if, if we do it and we're not bothered by it, we're not condemned by it, that's fine. But at the same time, if our conscience is there telling us, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, then what we need to do is we need to step back and not do it. Because he says this is that everything that does not come from faith is sin. And so if we're saying, well, I, 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 I don't feel like this is the right thing to do. But at the same time, you know, I'm just going to go along and I'm going to go ahead with what everybody else thinks and says. No, now, wait a minute. You know, you, you, you need to believe and you need to understand what the truth is. You need to understand what the truth is and you need to believe what the truth is. And when you understand and believe what the truth is, then as what he says here is that um, you're blessed because the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. And so, you know, if, if, if you're thinking, you know, this is OK, I don't have a problem with this. This is is you you believe the truth, then you, you're you're blessed by all of this. So what we need to understand is that when we have this liberty in Christ, this liberty in Christ needs to be used in conjunction with our conscience. Now, what liberty in Christ doesn't need to do is it doesn't need to be something that is just simply selfishly abused. OK, now let's go back to that very first verse that we read. Verse number 13, verse number 13. We see what Paul is telling the Romans here. He says, therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. And so here's the situation in this church, at Rome, where, you know, some people are saying, hey, we, we can eat all of this stuff. And other people are saying, no, we can't eat all that stuff. And you notice the controversy that's coming up. And that is this group is now judging that group and this group is judging that group. And he's saying, cut it out. Don't worry. This is not something that you need to do. What you do need to do is this. <clears throat> he says, instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. And so he's saying, you know, in this situation where you know what's right, but if you also know that by doing it, you're going to cause problem with somebody else, um, you, you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to put those stumbling blocks in their way. You don't want to put obstacles in their Christian past because that is something that God is definitely not going to like. Now, he goes on down in verse 15 and 16 to talk about the damage that's going to be done with all of these things. And we need to keep in mind that um, when we take our Christian liberty and we use it selfishly, we need to keep it in mind that, that we too could be doing damage to not only our Christian lives, our Christian walk, but we could be doing damage to other people other brothers and sisters in Christ in their Christian walk as well. Now, notice in verse number 15, it says this, if your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. And so here you're doing something and you know, just like Paul, you are firmly convinced in your mind that there is nothing wrong with what you are doing. And there is nothing wrong with what you're doing. You can go to Bible verse, <laughs> chapter and verse and say, hey, look, th there is nothing wrong with what I'm doing. OK, but it's not just simply your action. It's also what your actions are, the ramification of your actions or others. Because if you notice that by going and just simply bullheadedly going right through all of these things, if you notice that there is another brother or sister that is going to look at this and they are going to be hurt by it, they're going to be bothered by this, they're going to be in an uproar by this, they're going to cause all of this thing about judging and, you know, the controversy and everything like that. If you can continue to do it, I want you to understand that you are not doing this in love, are you? You know, if you just simply say, hey, you know what, I'm going to do it and I don't care what you think. I don't care if it hurts your Christian life. I don't care if you stop coming to church. I don't care if you're offended. I don't care if you storm out. I don't care anything about it. Well, then you've got the problem yourself. 
you know. The problem is not with your action, but the problem with how you did it and how you used or abused your liberty, now all of a sudden that is the issue. Because when you go and you intentionally cause harm to somebody else, you're not operating in love. And like I said before, is that, you know, there, there, there's things that are these disputable matters, and there's also some things that aren't disputable matters. And one thing that's not a disputable matter is just simply the fact that we're supposed to love. You go back to Romans chapter 12 and verse number 9, it says, love must be sincere. And so there you go, right there, you know. And you go all the way through the New Testament especially, and you see that the idea is simply this. We have to love our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and we have to love our neighbor as ourself. And so if we're going and saying, I don't care about what I do and how it affects somebody else, then we're certainly not operating in love. And at that point, we are certainly not doing ourselves any favor. We're doing damage to our lives. We're doing damage to our Christian lives because we're not doing what we need to do. But at the same time, you need to understand that there's not only damage done to us, but there's also damage done to other people. Okay, in verse number 15, again, he goes on to say is that in um, middle of verse number 15, do not by your eating destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Man, that's a strong statement, isn't it? I mean, here you've got a brother. It's not somebody who's an unbeliever, but it's somebody that you were supposed to have a connection to. It is somebody who has believed in Jesus Christ, and because they have believed in Jesus Christ, they are just as much of a child of God as you are. And you're not above them. They're not beneath you. We are on equal playing fields because we are both brothers or sisters in Christ. And here is somebody who is a brother who Christ has died for. And yet you, by your actions, you're going to go and you're going to just simply destroy them. You know, you're going to harm them in their Christian life. You're going to hurt them in their, their Christian walk. Now, do you see how that's a problem? And do you see the damage that's done? So many times that, but it's just, you know, it's just eating this, this clean meat. It's doing something that I can do. It's doing something that God approves of. You know, what's the harm in that? Well, you know, there's a harm in that if all of a sudden we start to hurt somebody else. And what's more is that there can also be something that is going to spread off into controversy. Look at verse number 16. In verse number 16 it says, Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. And so here we've got eating meat, sacrificed or, uh, uh, eating meat that's unclean, sacrificed or an idol, something that's in the Old Testament, whatever it is. You know, we've got this disputable matter and it's, it's something that is good. You know, it's, it's, it's something that you know, can be for our benefit and everything. But when somebody starts to press the issue and somebody starts to act not in the manner of love and they start to do something that damages other people, notice what other people are going to say about it, right? You know, you could come into a church, I could come into a church that, you know, they may be doing something, they may think it's great, they may think it's wonderful, they, that may be the way that they do things all the way around. And me, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, yeah, but, you know, that, that isn't necessarily something that God wants us to do. That's not something that's a commandment. That's not something that we have to do, you know. And so if I go into a situation like that and I just simply start doing the opposite of it, what are people going to start to do? They're going to start to talk. They're going to start to rumor. They're going to start to judge. And before long, you've all of a sudden got something that is a controversy that's right there. And so something that, that is good and I consider good, but because I'm continuing to press the issue, because I'm continuing to try to prove my point and bring other people to my side, then all of a sudden what is really good is now being spoken of as evil. Well, can you believe that, Pastor Lee? Can you believe what he's saying? Right? And so when we look at all this, we need to understand is that our lives are not just simply about us. You know, the phrase is that no man lives on an island. No man is an island to himself really is true. And that is our actions, for better or worse, our actions really are going to affect the people around us. 
They are going to affect our family. They are going to affect our friends. They are going to affect our neighbors and our co-workers. But they are also going to affect our fellow church members as well. And because our actions really do have an effect on other people, what we need to do is we just simply need to operate within a certain principle. Now, you say, well, what is that principle? Okay, well, understand that liberty is really for the advancement of God's work. And when we take a look at verse number 17, we see what that work is and we see what that work isn't. Now, look at verse number 17 with me. It says this, verse number 17 it says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Okay? Now, just stop and think about this for a second. The kingdom of God is not about rules and regulations. Because that's really what the eating and drinking is all about, right? And that is, should you eat or should you not? Should you drink or should you not? Here is this rule that we're going to set, you know? You either do this or you don't do this. You know, if you do it, you're great. Or if you don't do it, you're great. If you do the opposite of it, you're not so great. Okay? It's a rule that's there. It's a rule that's put in place. And understand this. The kingdom of God is not about these rules and regulations. The kingdom of God is not about the eating and drinking. Now, if you stop and think about our day and time and the way that we see things, how do a lot of people see Christianity. How does a, does a lot of people view the Lord's work, the kingdom of God? A lot of people view it in terms of rules and regulations, right? You know, here we've got these rules. You hear to these rules, you're a good person, you're a good Christian. You violate these rules, no, yep, you're on your way out the door. Some of these rules and regulations may be some of the traditions that we have. Some of these rules and regulations may even be something that will be disputable matters like what we're talking about here, right? But many times, and I think it is a common practice, that we just simply see the Lord's work, whether the Lord's work in church, the Lord's work in salvation, whatever. We see the kingdom of God as a matter of eating and drinking. We see the matter of, of keeping all these rules and regulations. But that's really not the case. As a matter of fact, if you go down in verse number 17, we really see what the Lord's work is about, don't we? And that is, it says, the kingdom of God is of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. So just simply think about this for a second. What is the kingdom of God really about? What is the kingdom's work all about? Well, it's about righteousness, right? That is, righteousness are really the things that God wants and the things that God doesn't want because there really are things that God wants and there's really things that God doesn't want. And so when we adhere to these things that God wants, we're righteous. When we don't adhere to the things God wants, it's, it's, it's unrighteous, right? Okay. And there is the idea about peace. And that is that we are supposed to have peace with everybody, but the peace that, that comes out to everybody first has to have and start with the peace with God. And if we have peace with God, then we can have peace with ourselves. And when we have peace with ourselves, and it makes it a lot easier to try to have peace with other people. And we also see joy that's there as well. Now, I want you to see that we've got righteousness, peace, and joy. And joy would be the case of what happens when we have righteousness and, and, um, and peace. But all of these things are from the Holy Spirit. And so when you think about righteousness, yeah, there's the idea about, you know, just practical righteousness in our lives. But the only way that we can have this practical righteousness in our lives is if we have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And we have that real relationship with Jesus Christ when we are justified or we are declared righteous by faith. When we go and accept what Christ has done for us on the cross, that's what faith is. We believe that Jesus died and rose for us. When we believe that and trust that, then all of a sudden we have righteousness that is imputed to us. We have righteousness that is given to us. 
And that is done through the Holy Spirit. And when we have that righteousness done to us, given to us by the Holy Spirit, then guess what? We can start to have peace because we have peace with God. And since we have peace with God, because we have forgiveness, then we can start to have peace with ourselves. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't that peace one of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5? Along with joy as well. So you stop and think about it. Here is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God and the work of the kingdom of God. It's not about these rules and regulations. It really has to do with having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ that is one that is full and vibrant where the Holy Spirit is working in us and through us, allowing God's character to be displayed of righteousness and peace and joy. Now, when we start to do this, you know, Christ is pleased. We see in verse number 18 there it says that because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God, you know, that's what God wants. He doesn't want a bunch of, of rule followers and rule keepers. He wants people who are going to have a real true relationship with Him who know the truth and do the things in the truth because they love Him. I mean, that's really what it's all about. And at the same time, when we start to do this, um, then all of a sudden, those are the things that, that really what's matter. Verse number 19, we read, it says, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and a mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. You know, if you're looking at things in terms of righteousness and you're looking at things in terms of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, you look at the other thing and just say, yeah, you know what? That other stuff doesn't matter. I don't even care anything about it. As a matter of fact, in verse number 21, he says, it is better to not eat meat or drink wine or do anything at all um, that will cause your brother to fall. You need to look at that and say, you know what? The kingdom's work is important and I, I don't want to hurt my brother. I don't want to hurt my sister. I don't want to hurt division within our church. I want to have good fellowship. I want to have good peace within us. And these are the things that, yeah, we, we can do, but at the same time, if they don't want to do them, it's no big deal, you know? And so, as long as we understand that, and as long as we're on the same page, you know, that, yay, it's, it's not a matter of your salvation. It's not a matter of, of your walk with God. It's just that that's what you want to do. You go ahead and do it, and I'm not going to push the issue. I'm not going to force it. I'm, I'm going to just simply do it because we've got something bigger. We've got something better that's there. And so, I just want to ask you a question to round things up. And that is just simply this. Are you using, are you abusing your Christian lo, uh, liberty? In other words, what's the main focus of your life? You know, if your main focus in your life is about the kingdom's work, if you are thinking about Hey, I want to advance the kingdom of God. I want to advance my relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to do the things that are good for what Christ wants. If, if we start to do that, then everything else is going to just simply work its way out on the end. But at the same time, if we lose sight of that and we think about, hey, I, I, I can do this and so I'm going to do it because I want to do it. I can do this and so I'm going to do it because I want to, you know, show somebody else what really is, is, you know, that I can. Well, then we're going to find out that we're going to be on the losing end of the stick along with a lot of other people too. Now, one thing before we leave off, and that is I want to bring up that liberty only comes with being saved. You can't have liberty unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know, the person who goes and... and um, um, you know, doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 3 and verse 18, stands condemned already because they haven't believed in the name of one God's one and only Son. And so, you know, we, we, we just look at it and say we've got two different kinds of people in the world. We've got sinners. We've got sinners who have been forgiven. And that's really all that it boils down to. You know, they've got people who just simply go and they think that they can take care of it on their own. Well, they can't because, you know, our sins have separated us from God. But if we, by faith, look to what Jesus has done for us on the cross, and He says, we, we come to a point where we realize Jesus died for us. Jesus has been resurrected for us. And because of that, we 
believe that he's going to forgive us. When we come to that point, we go to the Lord and we ask him to save us, then we're saved and we're delivered and we have that liberty. So today, if you're not saved, I hope that you'll place your faith in Jesus Christ. If you know that, that you're a sinner, you know that Jesus died for you, I hope that you'll just um, pray to the Lord and ask him for forgiveness because that's all it takes. And today, if you are saved, then let's understand what the kingdom's work is and isn't. And let's understand that our lives need to be about the doing what God wants us to do while we're here on earth. Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you for everything you've given us. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the time that we spent in your word. We ask that you please take your word and lead us and guide us in wisdom, lead us and guide us in truth so that we can be better servants for you. Please forgive us of our sins and please help us to put these um, things into action. Give us wisdom so that we can understand what is right and what's wrong and we can understand what is best for you and your kingdom's work. Lord, please um, be with us in the rest of the service and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.